Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of the Tanks World Podcast. And I am rocking solo today because, well, I wasn't feeling good this morning, so I decided to stay home. I'm starting to feel a little bit better now. But the movie I'm going to be talking about is the Rob Zombie's version of The Munsters. And this movie so far has been quite entertaining. It's not like a remake or a retelling of the TV show. It's pretty much based on um, Herman and meeting Millie. <sighs> the movie starts off with two eerie men entering a graveyard and there is a narrator being telling the story what's going on and the narrator is Elvira that makes this more interesting then the two eerie men goes to the you know graveyard and go and find themselves a body and then they have to go to a doctor's office because or a morgatory I should say and get a brain. The moral of this portion, they're putting um, Herman together. <laughs> then we end up seeing a coffin rise up. And a figure comes out of the coffin with his arms wrapped up towards his chest. And it's the Count. The Count tell asks for Igor to help him out and he asks where Lily is and Igor tells Lily I mean the count that Lily is out on a date with Nosferatu of all people um yes a vampire type character and he and her are out on their date and at this strange restaurant and Lily is Kind of interested, but also kind of creeped out at the same time. Because all of a sudden he is an ex ex uh, very interested in rats. So he's t telling or showing her a bunch of rats. And, <laughs> and she ends up going back to his place. And she decides to just go home. And Nosferatu is kind of heartbroken. Dr. Wolfie and Franz is in the laboratory with Herman's body trying to do the Frankenstein thing and bring him back to life. As they're doing this, Dr. Wolfie is acting a little bit even crazier than um, Dr. Frankenstein actually. They you know, do the whole electricity thing. And then, you know, they think it doesn't work. But, like, Franz tells, you know, Dr. Wolfie, look, he, it's alive. And Dr. Wolfie comes and tries to look. And <laughs> Franz has a cockroach in his hand. And he goes, oh, my pet cockroach, he's still alive. And Dr. Wolfie tries to crush the cockroach, but, you know, it's a cockroach. Then, Dr. Wolfie and Franz are trying to think of a name for the monster. He goes, Wolfie asks Franz, why would I name it Herman Monster? It's not monster, monster, like the cheese. Back in the lab, um, Dr. Wolfie and Franz ends up hearing some awkward screaming and they see that Herman is upright and flailing around like a madman. And they try to calm him down. You can't really see what he looks like. He's kind of more like a mummy than a Frankenstein creature. But then... We end up meeting Lily and the Count having supper for the night as they're also watching television. Um, 
uh, horror host named Dr. Frankenbean or something, I can't really remember. But they end up having Dr. Wolfie on there being interviewed and he's going to show them their new creature. So, as they're watching, Herman walks out of the backstage, you know, still kind of wrapped up, but you can still see his face. And he's just, you know, doing the Frankenstein thing. You know, just those little grunts and roars. And then he goes to the piano and starts playing, gets frustrated with that. And Dr. Wolfie has to try to calm him down. Then he ends up taking, like, some, that uh, medicine where you just spray to the back of your throat and it kind of heals it if you have a sore throat kind of like a cop drop spray but he starts doing stand up can stand up and the host is like laughing his ass off during this time lily is watching the television and she's getting butterflies and you know getting all hot and bothered <laughs> by the sight of herman monster but the Count is like, no, if I had a buffoon in this family, I'd have to disown, blah, 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 this, that, blah, blah, blah. Then he asks Igor to shut the TV off. And Lily gives, like, really red eyes. And Igor puts his own hand down to, with the controller in his hand. Dr. Wolfie is appalled as what he sees. He really expected intelligence and smartness from Herman. But he finds out that, you know, just like in the real Frankenstein, he, his associate Franz has goofed up the wrong person. Oh, by the way, earlier in the movie, there are two brothers that died at the same time. One being a genius and another one being a buffoon. Herman asks Franz, I cannot remember my name. And Franz is like, just picture it in big bright lights. The name Herman Munster. And then we go to a sign that says, for one night only, Herman Munster. And then Lily sees this sign and she decides to go into the club. And she witnesses like a rave of some sort as Herman's on stage playing guitar and singing songs. Herman asks Franz, I think I need a new image. I don't think this crazy rocker type person is me. But Franz tells him that it is and he asks the backup singers that are pretty much just zombies saying, Dad, uh, we don't care, blah, blah, blah. And then Fr Franz hands his hands, um, Herman the guitar, and he ends up smashing the guitar. And L Lily is getting closer and closer to Herman's um, dressing room. She runs into her brother, and he's kind of a mooch. And oh yeah, by the way, he's trying to get the deed for the castle that the monsters live in to give to these sh kind of shady people that kind of like he the guy owes her money the guy owes them they're like dealers of some sort and he owes them money so lily runs into him and she asks do you know where herman munster is and he he, he gives him her some directions to get to his like dressing room and she has to give him some money to get more information. And, yeah, he's kind of a greedy fella. Lily knocks on the dressing room door of Herman Munster. And Franz opens up the door and asks Lily, What do you want? And Lily asks, Is Herman Munster in there? And Herman turns around, looks at Lily... Kind of same effects of when Lily first saw Herman on the TV and gets butterflies. Franz kind of insults 
Lily by telling her to wait in line with all the others. Herman grabs Franz and throws him out of the way and tries to put his game on uh, Lily. And Lily, being very coy and very nice, would you like to have dinner sometime? And Herman's like, dinner? Huh. All right, let me just check my schedule. He comes and looks and comes back out. Yeah, I'm free. What would you like? She said, my place? Maybe tomorrow? And Herman pretty much goes, yeah, sure, that should work. Back at the lab, Herman and Franz are trying to find something for him to wear. And also in the castle, Lily and Igor are trying to find something for her to wear. As they try to find something, they just don't know what to wear. So Herman ends up putting on, like, <laughs> like, you know, the suit that Frankenstein wears. Maybe a little mixture from Toho's Frankenstein, too, with a little bit of fur. Lily's still not sure, but Herman ends up walking through this little, um, like, farmer's market of some sort, and he picks up some lilies, for Lily, and he ends up getting a bottle of O-negative blood. As Herman is walking his way to the castle, up above, he sees the, the Count leering down at him. During the supper, Herman is laughing and telling jokes. Lily is loving it. The Count is just very annoyed at the situation. And he pretty much calls Herman out tell me a joke, etc., etc., and the joke ends up being, how do you make a old, decrepit, old vampire upset? So, Herman keeps quiet, Lily has no idea, the Count's like, I don't know, and Herman just goes, I'll tell you later. Then Lily and Herman end up going out on a walk through the cemetery, holding hands. But before they cut to that, this scene, the Count and Igor say, we need to get rid of this Herman monster situation. As a montage of clips of Herman and Lily doing random things like going to a party, dressing up like Sonny and Cher, and singing I Got You Babe, running into the creature from the Black Lagoon, hanging out with him, and having seaweed. They end up on a little island at the Devil's Island Hotel. As Herman and Lily are on the beach, Herman gets a little shy and scared and frightened. Lily is concerned, but Herman just pretty much as proposes to Lily. And at this point, the Count is putting up a, opening up a big old book of spells because he doesn't want, you know, Herman Monster to be dating the, his little Lily. He's being an overprotective father. And at this time, he's, we meet Wolfgang is back, or Wolfie. Dr. Wolfie is back with Franz. And Herman walks into the house. And pretty much they want to know if she said yes or not. And Herman pretends to cry as Franz is just berating her. All oh, them vampire chicks are all the same. Blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. And then Herman says, she said yes. And Wolfgang is... He looks over and says, ah, I'm proud of you, my boy, but do not go to this island. And he turns his face and he's got a bunch of boils on it. He's kind of got the plague or something or other. And then we cut to the Count brewing up a potion of some short sort of 
you know, he's adding different things to it with, like, it's, to find a good man for Lily. Like, a strong man, a, like, the chest hair of Tarzan, the shoe of, like, a very famous dancer, and the, of Swagger, the cowboy hat of John Wayne. And apparently John Wayne did wear a toupee. The Count asks Lily why she is acting strange, and Lily shows him the ring that Herman has given her, and the Count just faints. A couple days later, the wedding is happening, and Herman meets um, Lily's brother, the werewolf, and he pretty much makes him sign the deed unbeknownst to the Count or Lily. So Herman and Lily end up getting married. The Count tries to say something. Lily zaps him with lightning. And Wolfgang and Franz just take swigs of booze. And they kiss and the robotic priest almost blows up. And they dance the night away. As Herman and Lily go out on their honeymoon to Paris, they are walking down the streets, people avoiding them with caution, well, because Herman is a monster. Lily is just a gothic vampire girl. But they still go through minding their deal, but they feel offended when they see nobody seems to be approaching them or talking to them. Herman pulls out a, a berade and puts it on his head, and they start walking around. Again, they end up going to a little restaurant area where there is a mime, and he is, you know, doing mime things. There are other people there, you know, eating lunch, drinking wine. It is Paris, you know. So, L Lily and Herman watch the mime. The mime screams. Everyone else starts screaming. And then, you know, one thing led to another, and everyone flees. A lady eating pasta may have died. They pick up a newspaper and find, in French, a monster um, living in the sewers of Paris. So, they're going to go find their monster. Herman and Lily go down into the sewer to locate their monster. As they go to each part of the corridors, they find different signs that include danger, keep out, you know, you may be eaten or you may die. So they see a tail down under the water and Herman just goes down and pretty much wrestles it for a little bit and then pulls it up, and they have their pet dragon dinosaur lizard thing from the movie, I mean the TV show. Back at the castle, the Count is looking at a Play Ghoul magazine, a little parody of Play Girl or Playboy magazine, but it's just sillier that way. As he's looking at, Igor comes with some mail, and... I guess it's got to really, really suck to be served by your butler. He, yeah, the Count is being sued, and actually they are being vacated from the castle because of Herman's stupidity, because Herman signed some papers by um, the, the Count's son, who is the werewolf, who really, really has a gambling addiction and alcoholism and... Yeah, he's just not a very good character. So, Herman and Lily are in their suite, and her, the Count is... literally have gotten to Paris. Well, he is a vampire, so I'm guessing he turned into a bat and just flew to Paris from Pennsylvania. He shows up at the door, and... Herman keeps not realizing who it is when he keeps opening the door, 
because he's just trying to get wine and get a little bit busy, bazzy, boozy, mom, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if you know what I mean, with Lily, Lily. But the Count pretty much comes in, gives back his change, and pretty much tells Lily that they are vacated from the castle. And Lily brings up the lawyer from the old, like, magazines and stuff like that. Apparently he can get them out of everything. Herman is watching a character on the television that apparently says he's the most beautiful man in Hollywood while well, he's a quite ugly son of a bitch. And Herman pretty much says that he and the family should move to California or Hollywood. Lily's like, I don't want to leave Pennsylvania and go to Tinseltown. And Harmon's saying, as the man of the house, I should say that we are moving. And the Count is like, even me? And Herman says, yes. Well, he kind of guilt trips Herman into bringing him along, even though that the Count's been quite rude to him. Even, even, even though that Igor can't come along because apparently he's a low, low life, um, cheapskate. So the monsters are going to Hollywood. Apparently, at in the Count's laboratory, um, he's whipping up some type of potion to possibly transform Igor into a bat, but Igor is not really having it because he says he's kind of up there in age and he doesn't think his body would be able to handle the size and effects of the transformation. And that's completely understandable because who knows what the perf like, you know, the Count's potions would actually do to someone. Lily is on the phone with a realtor trying to find a decent house but Herman and the Count keep bringing up different things that, you know, they don't want to be as, like, popular or the freaks of the neighborhood or anything like that. Um, the realtor tells her, oh yeah, we got some good spots in this certain area that's kind of decent and kind of hidden from this, the other parts of, you know, the town and stuff like that. So they just want to be like themselves. So... They make the deal, and they hop onto a plane to California, where Herman is getting just wasted off Shirley Temples. And it was nice of them to move them all up to first class, because everyone from first class moved to the back of the plane to coach. And Herman gets drunk. Uh, he wants another Shirley Temple, and the waitress, the, the flight attendant, comes... And sees what she want he wants, and he uh, as for another Shirley Temple. As she returns with a Shirley Temple, she is wearing a parachute and a helmet. And as she opens up the door and leaps out after Herman gets his drink, and Herman kind of kind of passes out. Then the plane lands, and the Count and Lily are waiting for Herman. And as Herman is being slightly carried out by the pilots of the plane. They end up going to the realtor's office and seeing that she is dressed up like a witch and Herman opens the door and the lady faints because of the sight of Herman and the, the monsters wake her back up and she thinks they're just in costume. But, uh, lady, they sure the heck aren't. As they are going to look at the houses, they see the famous house from the television show, 1313 Mockingbird Lanes. As the realtor is about to show them the, not the monster's house, um, the Count, Lily, and Herman protests that they don't want that small little house. They want the big decrepit looking house that you see in the television show. And the realtor lady is like, 
it's yours. The thing has been an eyesore to me. It's been a pain in my caboose. And literally, you guys can have it. When do you want to move in? They say, right now. As the monsters are sitting on a couch, seeing Spot's tail in the background, the Count brings up that, uh, yeah, we got the House of our Dreams, but we're broke. Lily ends up bringing up the thought of them getting jobs. Herman brings up, I'm the man of the house. I'll go out and get a job. The monsters end up going to the Halloween party that, you know, the realtor was going to. And they have a danged old time. And then they end up winning the costume contest thinking that, you know, it was somebody else that ended up winning the costume contest. So they get a big check of money, looked like uh, thousand, one thousand fifty dollars or something like that, and a giant trophy. And they end up going to bed. Actually, Herman gets encountered by a couple guys that work in the funeral business. They need a large, strong man to uh, move some of their heavier um, clients, we shall say, from their spots. Then they end up going home, and Herman ends up taking the job. Herman, Lily, and the Count end up going to bed. The next morning, they're having breakfast, and a little clock with a little crow that comes out like a cuckoo clock ends up say time for work, dummy. So Herman ends up going outside and seeing that everything is bright and shiny, and there are people not in their Halloween costumes, and they are just pure terrified and scared. So Herman turns around, runs back into the house, tells Lily and the Count that they're, they're all might be taken over by aliens or something. So the Count and Lily go outside and see the same thing and their jaws drop. They end up biting their knuckle and saying, what happened to all the hotties from last night? Lily ends up chastising her father and her husband for being very judgmental towards their neighbors. It, because they aren't as unfortunate to them like they are, meaning they can't judge a book by their covers. So, they hear a knock at the door. They end up opening the door and it ends up being Lester. The werewolf brother and the son of the Count. Herman threatens to beat him, but he says he made a killing in Las Vegas and he ends up paying off the, well, giving Herman his cut. And they end up celebrating because they are now rich. So, the monsters end up going in, the movie ends up going into black and white and shows the old classic um, entrance with the theme song and everything. But just with the actors of this movie doing the roles. Herman busts through the wall, you know, Lily goes through the Herman <laughs> breakthrough. And guys, honestly... It's actually interesting that this movie was directed by Rob Zombie, of all people. Because there is no murder. There is no bloodshed. There is, it's literally a slapstick comedy. And it's good. I really recommend that this movie gets seen, at least. Some of the purists out there may not really care for this movie very much but I at least give them 
at least recommend them to at least give this a watch. I know there will be the original till the day they die, but trying new things is okay too. So, this has been the Tank's World Podcast. I am Tank. Have a wonderful day, night, evening, whenever you're listening to this. So, I'm Tank, and I love y'all. And, by the way, it's October. Happy creepy season.